Hi, this is Frank with a Frank Opinion. In my opinion, Americans have been stuck between a rock and a hard place for over 45 years. The rock is the Republican Party, and I can't think of anything within the last 25, 30 years where they've initiated and championed something that would measurably improve the quality of life of Americans throughout our country not on climate change, not on health care, not on education, not on in increasing the ability of citizens to vote easily, uh, nothing. But the hard place is the Democratic Party. The Democratic Party is supposedly the party of working families that will uh, help the poor, uh, the party that constantly says that if you work hard and play by the rules, you'll be able to have the American dream, and create a foundation and opportunities for your children and grandchildren to have a better life than you in the future. Well, not exactly. I decided to do some research and I stopped reading my science fiction books. Decided to read something maybe even more exciting. Congressional Budget Office Reports. And these are, you can find them on cbo.gov they have a wealth of information. They're done periodically uh, and often on a variety of topics. I would suggest that you look at poverty and income security or income distribution or wealth distribution. And they're written primarily for congressional representatives or elected officials on a federal level, government in general, but also it's open to the public. I decided to open up and took a look at our CBO report for 2011 uh, titled Trends in the Distribution of Income between 1979 and 2007. And a major finding of that report was that the income gains, that is that share of total income uh, that was gained by 80% of our population actually went down and that the only gains really went to the 20% top quintile, 20% top earners, and even there, the vast majority of the income gains went to the top 1%. So, most of growth went to top 1%, that's a direct quote. All other groups, that's 80% of Americans, saw their share decline by 2 to 3%. I then decided, I was fascinated by that, intrigued, so I took a look at the 2016 CBO report titled Trends in Family Wealth, 1989 to 2013. Not surprisingly, that had similar results, unfortunately, to the earlier report, but this time in terms of wealth. And I want to quickly read to you and summarize what they basically said. Wealth gains only went to the top 20%, and once again, basically, the vast majority of that went to the top 1%. Here's a line from that 2016 report. The share of wealth held by families in the top 10% of the wealth distribution increased from 67% to 76%, whereas the share of wealth held by families in the bottom half of the distribution declined from 3% to 1%. Declined from 3% to 1%. This shouldn't be surprising because two people in the United States have as much net worth as the bottom 50% of our population. Just two people. Now one of those two people has to include Jeff Bezos, Amazon. So you add Jeff Bezos' net worth between 140 and 160 billion dollars and Bill Gates and or Warren Buffett and you get the two people. So Jeff Bezos and Bill, Jeff Bezos and Warren, two people have as much net worth as the bottom 50%. So back to the, uh, the hard place. This is the way my mind works. I'm sorry about that, but you know, I decided to look up, uh, well, how long have Nancy Pelosi, Steny Hoyer, and Jim Clyburn been in the House leadership? Either actually the leadership or being the minority leadership in the House. So Nancy, elected in 1987, she was the speaker from 2007 to 2011, now the speaker again. Her buddy, Steny Hoyer, always brings him along. 
This guy's unbelievable. 1981, this guy was first elected. 2007 to 2011, House Majority Leader. 2019, same position now. Representative Jim Clyburn, Nancy's other buddy. 1993, not so good, but still a long time. 20's been there 26 years. 2007 to 2011, he is the majority whip. 2019, going forward, again, majority whip. That's 93 years of elected representation in the House of Representatives in a leadership capacity within the Democratic Party. So these folks that could have been reading, I don't know what they read, but could have been reading CBO reports. If they didn't want to read it, they could have had their staffs read it and uh, summarize these reports for them. I can't imagine, I cannot actually condone that an elected official would be there this long with this transfer of wealth going to the top 1% while the vast majority of Americans are doing crap and not have done something meaningful about it. And the reason why I think that's so important that to understand issues like paying for Medicare for all, having either two-year college education or even more four-year four college education, being free across the land. As Americans, you have to understand that you've gotten screwed for 40 to 45 years. You've been between a rock and hard place for a long, long time, and it's time for catch-up. So, today's fact bomb. I'm going to include these fact bombs from time to time. The purchasing power of the minimum wage peaked, guess what, in 1968. It has gone steadily down since 1968. $1.60 in 1968 bought over $11.70 worth of goods in today's dollars. Think about that. Okay, and we're struggling with even $10 or $11 or $15 as a federal minimum wage that will be phased in over three or four years. So what do I want you to do with these fact bombs? I want you to share this information. Talk to friends, talk to bowling buddies, talk to family members, invite people over. As a matter of fact, this Friday night when you have dinner at your house with Milton and Ethel, right after the main courses and you're ready for dessert and coffee, just come out and say, by the way, Milton, Ethel, did you know that the minimum wage in our country peaked in 1968? Maybe that's the reason why we've been feeling pinched for like 30 years. Milton, it's an unbelievable thing, isn't it? I'm telling you, Milton and Ethel will respond. They will begin to have a conversation with you. These are the types of conversations we need to have. We should be happy as punch that the new class of freshman con congresspeople in the, in the House has come in when they have. Uh, obviously the most notable one is Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez who has come in with a vision and a sense of urgency because obviously the three people on the previous page, Nancy, Steny, and Jim, didn't have the sense of urgency that we need to have to redress being between a rock and a hard place for over 45 years.